you know? In 1999, a 3D platforming game called 40 Winks was released by GT Interactive for the original PlayStation. While a version was planned for the Nintendo 64, negative reviews and poor sales of the PlayStation game led to the N64 release being scrapped. The cancellation came at the last minute, as the N64 game had already been reviewed by publications, and a strategy guide had been featured in Nintendo Power. In 2017, game developer Pico Interactive acquired the intellectual property rights to 40 Winks. Pico Interactive specializes in releasing titles for retro consoles, both by making new games or by acquiring the rights to unreleased ones. In February 2018, the company launched a Kickstarter campaign to fund the release of 40 Winks on N64. The campaign initially sought to raise $20,000, a goal which was met in its first day. The campaign closed after raising a total of $131,252 from over 1,700 backers. In November 2018, almost 20 years after its release on the PlayStation, 40 Winks was finally released on the Nintendo 64. Besides cancelled games, the N64 had many games that were censored, including Nintendo's own games. Cruise in USA was originally released in arcades and later came out on the N64, with both versions being published by Nintendo. This was unusual, as the arcade version was far from family-friendly, resulting in the N64 game being censored. One difference between the two versions is the Trophy Girl, who wears more clothes in the N64 release. Interestingly, this Trophy Girl is actually adult film star Shyla Fox, who's credited in the game as Anutza Hurling. The game's gear shift was reworked in the N64 build too. The arcade version called it the XL Power Shaft, which may have been too raunchy for a home release, so it was renamed the XL Power for the N64. Some of the arcade version's courses have animals walking across the streets, such as deer and cows. Whenever the player hits them, they explode into bloody pieces and slow the player's car down. These animals were removed from the N64 version entirely. During the final race through Washington, the player drives through a tunnel pasted with money. In the arcade release, players can see what appears to be Hillary Clinton's face on the bills, smoking a cigar. This seemed to be too much for the N64, where the faces were switched for a more inconspicuous Benjamin Franklin. In the arcade version, former US President Bill Clinton appears in a whirlpool with half-naked women waiting for the player to join in. The N64 version instead shows the player's car on a pedestal. One of the most heavily censored games on the system was Duke Nukem 64. This title, which is a port of Duke Nukem 3D, had many alterations. The game's PC version is littered with babes, who are captured by aliens and could be freed by the player. In the PC game, pushing the action button makes them moan, kill me. The player can fulfill their wish, resulting in the babes exploding. The babes are still in the N64 version, but they have a more modest look and can't be killed. Interacting with them on N64 just prompts the message, Babe saved. Alcoholic beverages were also replaced in the N64 game with more kid-friendly drinks such as cola. The mention of steroids was also swapped out for vitamin X in an effort to remove all references to real-world drugs. Another game censored from its PC release is Battlezone, with the N64 game removing all blood effects. If the player kills a pilot in the PC version, part of their body flies through the air, but in the N64 version, only the explosion itself is shown. Another censored N64 game is Forsaken. The game's European version is censored to have no blood splatter effects whatsoever. Players mainly fight against mechanical enemies in the game, but there's several missions where humanoid looters attack the player. In the North American version, the bodies of human looters fly apart whenever they're destroyed. There's even splatter sound effects when their bodies tear apart. However, this is all removed from the EU versions of the game. Another N64 game censored in Europe was Daikatana. Whenever an organic enemy is attacked in the North American release, purple blood is splattered around. However, the EU version shows sparks flying out of the enemies. The player also meets civilians and prisoners throughout the game. These NPCs can be killed in the North American game, but they're invulnerable in all European releases. Some of the N64's most unique peripherals were only released in Japan. The Suricon 64 was a fishing rod controller with a reel, and was compatible with Japan-exclusive fishing games, such as The Legend of the River King 64. A controller by Taito was specifically for its train simulation game, Densha De Go. The unique controller would plug into slot 3, a microphone in slot 4, and a standard controller in slot 1. The two levers control the train's speed, emergency brakes, and doors. Between the levers is also an indent where players can put a pocket watch to keep the time. The 
controller has the A, B, C, and start buttons as well as select, which can act as the Z button to show how far the next stop is. The company Reality Quest also made a video game control glove for the N64, as well as the original PlayStation. Reminiscent of the NES's power glove, the control glove had motion-controlled inputs with three sensitivity settings, and was designed so every button could be pressed by one hand. Perhaps the most unique peripheral for the N64 was the BioSensor. Created by SATA, the BioSensor plugged into the controller and had an earpiece that clipped onto the player's ear. From there, the BioSensor could monitor the player's heart rate. The BioSensor was compatible with a single game, Tetris 64, which released only in Japan. The title included a special mode known as Bio Tetris, where the Tetraminos would fall faster or slower depending on the player's heart rate. In addition to the Bio Sensor, SATA also made an arcade cabinet based on the N64 hardware known as the Alec 64. The device was first made in 1998 and discontinued in 2003, but was never available outside Japan. The Alec 64 failed to find much success, as only 11 games are known to be made for it. This included the soccer game 11 Beat World Tournament, the platformer Tower and Shaft, the shoot 'em up Star Soldier Vanishing Earth, Magical Tetris Challenge featuring Mickey Mouse, multiple Mahjong games, and an erotic action puzzler called Vivid Dolls. The N64 also had some unique add-ons. A company called EMS Production released an add-on called the GB Hunter that could play games Boy games on the N64. The GB Hunter came with a built-in cheat device and let players add color palettes to their Game Boy games. The peripheral needed an actual N64 cartridge plugged into it, otherwise the system couldn't boot the game. The GB Hunter also couldn't emulate any of the sound from the games it played, and would play its own piece of music on an endless loop. Another device known as the TriStar 64 was released by a Hong Kong company called Future Laboratory. The device allowed NES and Super Nintendo cartridges to be plugged into the N64, making the system backwards compatible with the NES and SNES. The TriStar 64 also included built-in cheat software, as well as a save editor. The N64 was home to many unlicensed cheating devices, the most popular of which was the GameShark. An expanded version of the GameShark, known as the SharkWire, featured internet connectivity. The device plugged directly into the N64's cartridge slot and had ports for a keyboard and telephone cable. With a paid subscription, players could access the SharkWire website to download cheat codes and transfer save data through their N64. The site also had articles on a variety of media topics and an email service. SharkWire was geared towards children aged 7 to 14, and there were plans for unrestricted web browsing and online multiplayer in the future. However, the service ran for just three years before it was discontinued in 2003. One type of third-party accessory that became important to many N64 fans was the backup unit, such as the CD64. This was an add-on that could save and run custom mode, as well as modify save data and emulate games. Although the most common use of these devices was to play pirated games, they became popular as a tool for developing homebrew games. Though the homebrew community on the N64 isn't as big as some other platforms, several complete and unique games have been made, such as ports of Flappy Bird and the Pyoro minigame from WarioWare. One of the most fleshed-out homebrew games for the system is an Arkanoid clone called Dexanoid, which includes 50 different levels. In June 1998, Nintendo announced a 10-year deal with LodgeNet, an American company who supplied services like on-demand movies and high-speed internet to hotels. As part of the agreement, LodgeNet would install Nintendo 64s in thousands of hotel rooms across North America, allowing guests to play a selection of first-party Nintendo games for $6.95 per hour. The LodgeNet systems came with a unique N64 controller with several extra buttons to navigate the LodgeNet menus, and the controller itself could be used as a TV remote. These LodgeNet controllers weren't compatible with normal N64 consoles, but because most were only gently used while in service, the controllers have become popular items with collectors as a reliable source of replacement parts. The Nintendo 64's unique three-pronged controller allowed for several grip types. The most used grips were to use the middle and right prong, or the left and right prong, but there are a few less used methods of holding the controller. Holding the left prong in the left hand and the middle prong in the right hand was used for a small handful of games such as Turok Dinosaur Hunter, which used this style as an optional left-handed control layout, and Pokémon Stadium, which used it for the Ekans' Hoop Hurl minigame. There was also a fourth controller grip method supported by some N64 games, which had players using the middle prong on two controllers at once. 
Because each controller had one analog stick, using two controllers allowed a game to emulate dual stick shooting, making this grip popular in several first-person shooter games. It also appeared in Star Wars Episode I Racer, where the two sticks were used to control the twin engines of the player's pod racer in a similar style to what was shown in The Phantom Menace. Did you also know that Elon Musk tried to add Mario Kart as a playable game in Tesla cars, but the idea was rejected by Nintendo? Or that Nintendo have been stuck in a legal battle with a Japanese go-karting company since February 2017? For more facts, check out the Did You Know Gaming video on Mario Kart Secrets.